welcome to ongea na shangazi karibuni sana tuongee ni mimi shangazi yenu maria sarongi tsahai na leo tunaongea na mtu almaaruf mtamtaja kwanza kwa jina anaitwa godfrey mwampembwa lakini najua wengi mnajiuliza mm, shangazi anazingua why is godfrey mwampembwa supposedly a celeb let me tell you why he's a celeb he's more popularly known as gado Gado as you all know is a very famous or infamous for that matter for some people cartoonist uh, and today we're going to be having a very interesting conversation uh, Gado hali yako vipi Salama and uh, nashukuru kwa kunikaribisha Sawa sisi ndo tumekaribia tumekuvamia kidogo in your little kingdom <laughs> ndo eneo ambalo uh, all those wonderful cartoons zinatengenezwa lakini nimeanza kwa kusalimia na kwa kukuintroduce Watu wengi hawajui kwamba jina la Mwampembwa ni jina ambalo si la Kikenya ingawa watu wengi wanajua wewe ni Mkenya. Um, mimi ni mtanzania. Nimezaliwa Tanzania, nimekulia Tanzania, nimesoma Tanzania. Hapa nilianza kufanya kazi. Lakini kwa sababu nilianza muda mrefu sana kutoka mwaka tisina mbili. Kwa hiyo watu wengi ambao wamenizoea wa, wa, wa wanajua kwanza jina Gado na kwa sababu ya toka muda huo wote they all know kwamba mimi ni mkenya yes. wajui kwamba nili mimi mtanzania e, nimekulia tanzania nimesoma tanzania e, hapa nilikuja tu kuanza kazi e, of course na watoto watoto wangu wamezaliwa hapa lakini e, mimi mtanzania kabisa na kwa sababu labda ya ku toka kwa muda huo nina uelewa mzuri wa, wa mazingira na siasa za, za Kenya kwa hiyo ni rahisi watu kufikiri mimi ni, ni mkenya na nimeishi miaka mingi hapa kwa hiyo eh, mara nyingi nachukuliwa kama mkenya That's very interesting sasa uh, it means kwamba wewe umesoma mpaka kuwa uh, a cartoonist yeah. is there something that you can study actually to become a cartoonist Well these days you can Uh, I did I I only um, I think a lot of times una 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 unakuwa na hiyo talent lakini um, I, I I I I had the talent of of, of drawing and, and I studied fine art in my 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 secondary school years lakini hapa nilipoanza nilianzia hapo lakini baadaye nilisoma um, uh, animation and film and so i in in, in I'm, i'm a classical animator in, in vancouver canada i studied communication and um, in um, traviso italy uh, kwa hiyo hiyo ikanipa mu, uh, uh, um, wakati na muda wa kujifunza zaidi editorial cartooning itself these days in a fundisho mashuleni i mean i nime, nime, mimi mwenyewe nime, nime funza au nimetoa lectures na, na talks kwenye shule mbalimbali uh, and, and so in a, siku hizi inafundishwa lakini kimsingi pia unakuwa uh, lazima uwe na, na, na mvuto na, na uwe na, na talent kidogo sasa talent sometimes inakuwa overrated you know watu wanafikiri ni talent no ina, inabidi kuwa na, na hiyo talent but pia ni, ni, ni wewe ni media practitioner na ni journalist so kwa kiasi kikubwa lazima u practice kama mwanahabari e, na kuna kuna wanahabari e, kuna najua kuna editorial cartoonist wengi ambao ni wanahabari kabisa kwa hiyo ni trained journalist so kwa hiyo hilo linachangia kwa kiasi kikubwa uh, kwa wewe katika kazi yako sasa kwa mimi nime 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 ni mwanahabari practically ama practitioner by kwa 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 kwa, kwa katika, katika hilo you you've touched kidogo kwamba umesomea uh, fine art in secondary school secondary school ya hapa au ya no, tc mimi nilisoma azania secondary school so oh. the product ya azania <laughs> na born and bred in dar kwa hiyo nime <laughs> 
nimekulia nimekulia Dar es Salaam uh, lakini nilikuwa na mvuto wa, wa, wa kuchoro toka wakati niko niko shuleni in fact i did uh, went to after my secondary school years and also national service nilikwenda nili nilikuwa nili nafanya um, um, a course in architecture at Art Institute which is now part of the Islam you know uh, university but i absconded my my studies to start working uh, something that i promised my parents that i will go back to finish my course i hope to go back to <laughs> 30 years later <laughs> <laughs> very yeah. good very good but uh, but i think now getting to you working as a cartoonist um you know you are you are basically a household name uh in east africa really yes you I are no so it means um you have been drawing quite a number of um well first of all high level uh, leaders primarily of course politicians yeah. and you very accurately at times send a zinger or send an arrow right through the egos um, but in a very fair and critical manner why do i say that for for tanzanians for example tunakumbuka wakati ule uh, ulipigwa mpaka ban kuingia i think au ulikuwa wali 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 walitoa gazeti lile la east african mm-hmm. baada ya wewe kumchora uh, rais wa wakati huo jk mm-hmm. jakaya kikwete akiwa amezungukwa na wanawake yeah, yeah. Eh, na that was a bold move yeah. i mean kitu gani kwa mfano wewe uvochora kitu kama hicho ulikuwa na waza nini <laughs> unajua watu wengi walikuwa wanauliza umewaza nini So it's fair to say uh, it's fair to say that uh, I'm, I'm also I've been lucky it's very important to note that I started working you know professionally at an at an institution that is Daily Nation that allowed me to do that I mean uh, so I, I was bold yes but also it's because I was given the opportunity to be bold and um, the, the the newspaper and and the, my editors defended me and 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 protected me so that's very important and i think um, um, lots of artists hawana hiyo hiyo platform how how sio sio rahisi kupata hatuna magazeti mengi hatuna vyombo vya habari ambavyo viko katika ranki hiyo kwa wakati huo wamiliki ambao wanaweza wa, sasa nation uh, as a newspaper ili, ilinipa mimi wakati huo na, na watu hawajui kwamba mara nyingi e, e, nimekuwa katika kuingia katika shida hapa na pale lakini nation has, wamekuwa siku zote wanatetea wana kwa sababu kwanza kazi yako ikisha kuchapishwa katika gazeti na maana gazeti lina kesi ya kujibu kama kukitokea kesi yote kwa hiyo that is one thing that has always um, is always forgotten and so uh, i was i was lucky enough uh, despite my abilities Uh, I was lucky enough to to get that opportunity kuanza ku you know very early on when I was very young to 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 do that and most importantly also I I was able to work with very um fantastic editors and and very good journalists and so I was able to learn quickly and 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 to to be able to do what I, what i do um, and in fact uh, the, 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 the drawing hiyo unayoongelea ya kikwete uh, ilipigwa ni, i think ilisababisha gazeti la east africa ku kuwa banned kwa mwaka mzima yeah. and so you had a situation where i remember doing that drawing and it was one of the drawing that was okay I, i don't think my editors really even questioned it and it was only a week later Uh, if i'm not mistaken that uh, you know all hell broke loose and i think the authorities in dar were unhappy and uh, you know so the, new, the the east africa was told to apologize which it did but then uh, later on you know there was um, you know i think uh, the, you know the, the authorities decided to say no we have to sh- to teach you a lesson so the the newspaper was the east africa was banned which did cost the, the 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 nation quite a lot of money you can imagine the for the whole year and so that was quite something that uh, nobody expected i personally um, i think uh, i always laugh because i think i've done probably more ferocious drawings that, that that i didn't think that actually they would react that way but the the the, the interesting thing with that is that uh, 
I, I don't know from what I had, yes. what this is, yeah. don't quote me on this, yes. is that because the drawing basically had JK surrounded by women. And, uh, you know, you had, so these women that, you know, labels, um, you know, um, cronism, yes. uh, corruption, yes. and all the things yeah, that Jakaya Kikwete, exactly. Yeah. That, you know, so, 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 so basically saying, you know, the president, you are engaging in all these things and, and, you know, as, as an emperor, you know, who's actually being fed and all that. Uh, so the, I, I suppose the idea of women around him was probably a little bit too, to close because Jakai Kikweta is accused of actually, or you know, his his uh, his, his got a reputation. reputation with with ladies, and so I think that's probably is what actually caused the the uh, that. Uh, <laughs> so, who is the most thin-skinned politician that you've ever met? If you can answer that, the who really took it personally? Yeah, they are very interesting politicians. I think they are used the. These are people who are very, they are used to be clapped on. And so they really don't like to be put down. And the role of editorial cartoonist is basically is to tell the emperor, you have no clothes. It's ni kuavua nguo wana siyasa. Na ni ku, wanasema, editorial cartoons basically zina, na wadharau. And, and rightly so, they, they, dis, they disrespect, you know, in quotes, in the sense that you disrespect. And, and that's the, they have that license. You know, and, and so the idea is to kusema kwamba viongozi ni watu, na ni watu kama wakawaida, and so sio miungu hawa. Kwa editorial cartoonist ndio zina remind viongozi, yii sio miungu na zinawambia the society. Hawa sio ni watu tu na wanafanya makosa and so, you know, they are fallible. Kwa hiyo, wanasiasa na viongozi wengi hawapendi. Kwa hiyo, katika... Wengine wanafumilia. I think I've met probably one of few people who are, you know, don't mind that. Majority of them are actually quite, um, uh, quite, they don't take it kindly. I think they've, uh, uh, I, over the years, uh, I will not mention them, but they have, I have, I should share my files. Yes. I mean, there have letters uh -huh. and people who have, you know, written to threaten me, people who have um, personally, personally pers threatened me. Some, I mean, uh, you know, cases that the nation had to settle. Um, and uh, I mean, and that's not alone. I mean, even my colleagues have, have, have faced that, you know, that so, so, you know, you need as an editorial cartoonist to develop a thick skin. You need to be able to do that because it can unsettle you. They can, they, they can. I mean, I, my family has been threatened. I have been threatened. Uh, so you need a little bit of that to be able to do that uh, day in, day out. And um, I have the... Uh, at, the, at the personal level, what I do is I have a, I maintain an arm's length at, you know, with this, uh, these characters and, and, you know, I, I find them quite interesting creatures. Have you ever really felt that threatened? I mean, was it like all talk when an Tishia? Oh, there was a time you said this threat can actually become real. I have to, you know, really yeah. now take precaution. Mm -hmm. There are times that I did, uh, you, you, you know, it can be real. I mean, I, I remember very well that one time I think I did, uh, I, I, I got, I, I did, um, and by the way, it's not only leaders. So you have also religious institutions that are very, yes, yes, yes. Uh, business leaders. I know what one time I think the, 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 the Muslim community, you know, here, you know, were very offended by cartoon. And I, I received threats, and, and that was before the Danish cartoons, by the way. And, and the nation, Salman, Salman Rushdie, it, it was after Salman Rushdie, but it was after 2005. And I remember that, that they, I got threats, you know, they, you know, we had to pull that cartoon out of, the, you know, out of online. And, um, you know, the nation had to apologize um on, on this front page about that particular drawing and so so that can unsettle you i um, mean especially also when your family is 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 is, is threatened um and then so you you do that i mean recently with the online and, and social media i i probably get that alone but you have all manners of crazy people online and so you you, you probably brush them aside and, and but but watu hao wapo and and i think unachotakiwa ni ku kuwa na eh wanasema lazima sawe na ngozi ngumu inabidi develop tu ngozi ngumu hakuna hakuna swala lingine
Na katika uh, kwa mfano creative process je unakuwa unashiriki wewe unakuwa ni part of uh, the editorial meeting unakaa unawasikiliza mnaongea both i mean there are um, mostly I, i i work um um it's a very lonely job <laughs> lakini uh, i i don't mind and i always enjoy you know uh, being part of the editorial meetings i i don't do that in in i with some publications i do and i enjoy that very much i i, I actually like the idea of also hearing other 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 um, people uh, my editors actually one of the thing that ambacho nimefanya vizuri um, over this years ni ku nimekuwa na ushirikiano mzuri sana na my editors and and i, I must admit that they've, they've been a huge part of of my my career because we had a, we always, i always say that we have we've had a love hate relationship with my editors because sometimes they're very annoyed with me sometimes they've been very good and and we then they've given me brilliant ideas whereby they would say you know okay maybe you can change it sometimes they've even said look you know wait hold this idea but we have actually a better a good story or let's hold it for two days and so forth so that collaboration is is always also important and it is always helpful uh, uh, so i do i don't mind but but you Uh, 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 basically ni wewe mwenyewe ulazima uh, ukae ufikirie u, 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 uje na mawazo gani uh, uje na um, kitu gani so inachotakiwa pia kufanya inatakiwa uwe mtu ambaye unasoma sana um, um, habari zinaendeleaje kujua nini kinatokea kujua um, mambo yanayotokea duniani but sio tu kusoma um, internet and magazine no indeed you need also to read a lot and, and, and i try to read as much as i can in terms of the the um, um, in depth issues so for example if you're dealing with the issue of climate change i mean for you to do effective editorial drawings i mean you really need also to get into what this issue is all about and so you really need to get to, to read about the science about it what is what's going on if you talk about for example refugees and all that i mean you can only do better drawings if actually you know better about what the refugees are going through so that is one thing that you need to do and that's one thing i try as much uh, as i can to do to 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 really get in depth um uh, about the, the the real issues of of the subjects that I deal with and then the next challenge now is how do you relate that to your readers and to your audience and so you of course have to do a number of sketches at at times and um the issue of drawing itself is not that complicated i mean it's unless you have as many characters and all that but it is the ideas and i think that goes to many of my colleagues and you do have to get the big picture yeah. Uh, what you said about that what comes to my mind is you have to have the big picture but you also need to see the connections yes. i think that is what makes really your work stand out among all the other cartoonists yeah. uh, especially on the regional level yeah. that you do see the connections so it means you get to see the connections of let's say one particular politician in that environment and you have to show that you understand the local context precisely Uwezo uka, ukachora ukasema kwa sababu mimi labda niko Kenya si sielewi kinachoendelea Uganda au kinachoendelea yeah. sehemu nyingine yes, duniani. Yes, yes. So you have to immerse yourself inabidi uelewe vizuri inabidi yeah. pia uh, kama ulivyosema ukitoka na katuni yako katuni yako mtu anaishi katika hiyo nchi mm. aone mpaka vile vitu vidogo aanze yeah, kucheka. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what I love. Yeah. I love the series you've made about Magufuli yeah. na nakumbuka kwamba ulianza kutoa Uh, tuseme ulitoa angalizo mapema e, wakati bado wengine hata hata personal lakini watu wengi bado tulikuwa tunamwona kwamba kuna jambo la maana atakuja kufanya ulianza kutoa wanasema warning yes, eh, kutoa yes. onyo yeah. ukionyesha kwamba sasa ameshaanza ku attack yeah. kikundi fulani kikundi fulani yeah. na kumbuka kuna katuno onyesha hiyo kidogo watu wanasema uh, it's a bit of course uh, maybe uh, exaggerated wanasema ni unabii yes. yani kuna uwezekano ule wa kwamba unaona vitu ambavyo watu bado hawajaona do you think that's a talent au inatokana na hizi research zako it's a combination of both i don't i think that is it's a combination of also 
um, uh, as, a, as, a, as an artist, as a journalist, what, you know, you, I must admit also, I mean, I've, I've been around for a while now. So, I mean, when Magufuli came to town, I mean, you, you, you can only also compare him to other, you know, leaders. And so you definitely also um, try as much to say, okay, what has he got? So, you, you, so artists are also, the really, editorial cartoonists are also sort of like uh, uh, skeptics. You know, they, they, you, we question everything. So if you, Maria comes here, you like, no, 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 we will question you. And that's the, you know, we start from that premise. And so that, that is very helpful in the sense that you, we, it's not an art of clapping. It's, it's an art, the moment anybody comes, whether you have the pop there, you start finding out, okay, what can I question this pop? You know, you have a new president, is that what do we have on him? And so satire thrives on that. I mean, we have to start from there. And so that, that is also, so it's part of it. Now, then you have to build on it. You have to build on your research. You have to build on, 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 on this, um, on, on your reading uh, and but readings. But there is a gut feeling. Yes, there is a gut feeling. And, and part of it is actually the gut feeling is part, part of it is, is how you, you have developed how also you have read how you so you have uh, you have over the years you know and and you have to read uh, uh, quite a lot and, and so for example even you know i i always con and i'm constantly in, in in contact with my fellow you know artists my journalists i mean i call in tanzania the people i know and i would ask questions i say well, but you know there is an issue i'm dealing with you know what do you know about it? so I, I'm, I'm constantly in it, it's not it's not something that you start sometimes you know you have a white blank piece of paper and there you have then you know kesho uko na 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 katuni ah sometimes ideas zinachukua even wiki mwezi miezi because sometimes huna ile um huna kile unachokitafuta au unachotaka kusema kwa hiyo na katika hilo una una una, una, una end up kuongea na watu mara nyingi sana napiga na, na simu Tanzania Uganda uh, South Africa where you know the squeeze kuna kuna internet na Nigeria I have friends and in nilikuwa nafanya kazi but, you know kuna kuna katuni ya Peter Obi and uh, I've read a bit about it. I haven't come with an idea, but I spoke to a good friend of mine in Nigeria uh, who, who gave me a very good insight about him. And so that, that is how you're, you're supposed to, if you want to be effective and if you want actually to, be, to have an impact or if you want uh, your work to have an impact. So it, 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 it's something that you have to develop. So based on that, do you also get ideas from common mwananchi? Apart from kuongea na wandishi wa habari na nini? Mwananchi tu kawaida au pia do you get ideas online? Unasoma tu wanaongea nini watu? You know, what inspires you? Wananchi wa kawaida. In fact, that's where you get the best political analysis ever. Kwa wananchi wa kawaida. Forget about it unasoma. In fact, I've developed some of the my, my some of my best drawings have come from just common mwananchi. So I have the habit, for example, whenever I take taxis, I always engage political in, uh, taxi drivers in a, in, a, in a political talk. And I say, sasa, kunaendelea VPR. Unasemaji. And the analysis you get there, you will not get anywhere. Uh, whenever I go to my barber, you know, I, I enjoy that. I would just throw, you know. And the, the beauty about it is that they, they just don't know me. So, you know, we just actually just say, okay, and they'll be honest about it. I mean, you know, when I, if I get an opportunity somewhere, I would just probably, you know, what, you know, what, what do you think about it? And then I just let the peop, you know, them speak. And you, you get quite, actually, quite some wonderful, wonderful analysis of actually, of, of the political issues. Because sometimes we tend to argue issues from a very, very, um, you know, um, very wrong perspective. I mean, you know, the, the, the common man will always give you, you know, a very, very, you know, um, you know, the sensitive bits of, of, of the political debates. Let's get now to actually talking about your work and also recognition. How many awards have you received? What is the best recognition that you can recall? Well, I mean, well, they are all the best, uh, you know, it's difficult to say which ones are, the, but I've not gotten that many. I mean, I, I don't, I think I've gotten, um, recently I got one, the, 
the what they call the the French one from the French government. Uh, that's that's the recent one. Chevalier des ordres des lettres et des arts. Des arts or this? No, apparently the French one doesn't come with that. Oh. The French one it does the come. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't come with that. Um, so, uh, but I got the Kenyan Human Rights. Um, Award uh, and uh, also the Kenya Human Rights. Uh, I got twice of that, so I'm very proud of that. Uh, I got the you know the KUJ uh, you know one. I got that. I was very proud. I got one with the um, the uh, uh, cartoonist for right cartoonist um, for peace. They awarded me with one in Switzerland, and I got one with the uh, also um, the um, uh, Ford Foundation. They had me the one visionary award for the my work in 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 in, in also in, in television, and so uh, so I've been lucky enough to get a few um, of those. So the X Y Z show people uh, don't really know yeah. uh, that much. I mean, people do not necessarily associate you with that show. Yeah, yeah. But I know Rightly that it's so. your yeah. But that's your brainchild. <laughs> that's something that you have immersed yourself a lot into developing, and and it has been a huge work, by the way. Yeah, it has been a huge work. People didn't know that I worked. I did that uh, in two thousand and three. So it took up. It took me about seven years first before I could actually. So I did um, um, developed it. Uh, I created, developed it. But I was also been, of course, with the help of the um, um, some of our partners. But also, I worked with uh, the, the the success of the show has been. Because I worked with brilliant, brilliant, uh, you know, artists, voice, ta voice artists, and uh, a brilliant team behind it. And so I was lucky enough. I don't. The show goes on. I don't produce it anymore. I'm, I'm just there by name. But uh, we have also a fantastic team that produces it. Uh, but it has been fun. It has been quite a, a lot of uh, hard work because we had to start from scratch. We didn't have any reference. And uh, it's also a very expensive show, so it's not an easy to produce one puppet. It's 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 thousands of shillings. How difficult is it because you also have to actually produce puppets that look like real exactly. life people. So that's actually it's not the difficult bit because we all we developed uh, you know a very good style and we had a very good artist that could draw those artists and we had a um, people don't know that we we you know you had a team of about fifty people over fifty working on it when we were on show. So and it take a month yeah. to 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 do the, the to get the puppet. So we have actually. So if we are to do a puppet of, of Maria, for example, we'll actually have a hairdresser who has to come up with the hair, your hair. Uh, we have an artist who actually artists who have to work for some weeks over your bust and and your face and up to, you know, um, because and then one puppet is operated by two people. So you have normally, whatever scene you put, you have to multiply by two. Those are the people in, 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 involved, yeah, in the background. And then, of course, you had post-production people, we had animators, we had uh, voice talents before that. And we had, uh, you know, at each show we had um, it, um, about five at any go, we had about five writers, and I was part of it. So we had actually, that's why I'm telling you, we had a team of, when we started, we had a bigger team. Up to, at one time, up to eight, but we cut the team. And we were doing it week in, week out. So it was a big show, and it was a big, uh, big success in terms of the impact. And in terms of also the, we had also the, one of the things I'm proud of, we were, we were always in control of, uh, largely to our editorial policy, which is very difficult to get with any editorial, I mean, with any TV station. So it was actually a very good um, um, su uh, success. We, we have w I've gone to do other um, television shows, but um, I'm, of course I'm proud of, of, of the XYZ show. And I'm, 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 I, as I said, now I don't do it anymore. We have other producers that are, are trying to do it. And we did 14 seasons, so that's... That's, that's not that's um, great. Yeah, I don't. Right. I think very few shows actually. Get very few shows. Yeah, and again, as I said, it's, it's actually I won't get into numbers, but it's a very expensive show because of actually you have to do, you have to buy specific. So if we are to do, you know, Maria again, we have to buy also, you know, 
uh, garments that are Maria. So we actually, we, and that's the challenge with it. We, you know, we, you can't actually, so when we did, for example, you know, puppet of Ray Lodinga, we have to do him with his shirts. And we had to actually to work with actual tailors to, to do that for us. So it was actually, you know, like, you know, like people did not know, but largely it's also a very um, expensive show, very demanding show. It's 24 seven kind of show. And we had, a, but as I said, we also had a very, you know, up to today, I think it had a, it has a fantastic team of, of, of artists and, and uh, I was lucky enough to work with those guys and we, we still work with them, uh, you know, at Buni. And so, um, um, uh, you know, I, I, I think um, even though it was very difficult at the beginning, it was worth it. So. You have worked also outside the East African sort of region uh, and you have been also like almost, I would say, inspiring or consulting on projects which are more Pan-African. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? I think I've always been a Pan-African. In, you know, for some in interesting, interestingly long, when, even when I was a kid, I mean, I was always interested in foreign affairs. I, mean, I, I, I remember, you know, I was always being glued to listen to BBC as a kid because we didn't have television in, down, in, in Tanzania, but I was always glued to BBC and I was always reading. I mean, my dad would come from with Newsweek and I would read you know, and, and I really felt, so somehow I was always uh, that kind of guy. I mean, I was always very interested in, in, in foreign affairs. And so I, um, I even when I start, we started Buni um, with my co-founder, co Marie Laura Mungai, we, our vision was also to do Pan-African project. Indeed, the, the XYZ was a very Pan-African, you know, um, idea. And so... Uh, I, I, we did also uh, what you would call uh, an offshoot of that with uh, Ogaz at the top, which did actually in Nigeria. We worked with the Nigerian writers. We, you know, I enjoyed visiting Nigeria with that. And, and we are thinking of actually reviving that. And um, we did everything here, but we did actually, the writers, we worked with them over Skype. You know, we'd write stuff over, over online. I've worked with um, um, writers from Zimbabwe. Um, and we've worked with artists in, in Uganda. We've trained artists there, by the way. We've worked with artists in Tanzania. I've worked, I've enjoyed working, and actually we are trying to see if we can do more of that. We've worked with artists in Sudan. We've, we've trained them here. We've worked with artists in... Um, there was an opportunity to work with artists in Senegal, but we, we, we only traveled there. Uh, that did not come to fruition. And so we have been very, I've, I've been actually lucky enough also to work with these artists. And it has been actually something that I've enjoyed uh, immensely. I've, I've been part and parcel of uh, Cartoonists for Peace. And so in that also I've been able to online to, 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 to give talks, you know, across the continent in some countries and even in Europe and, and also in, in other countries. Um, as, as an individual, I think I've given um, talks to students uh, in the U.S. And recently, I had a you know very wonderful discussion with uh, you know a, a university in Korea, and 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 uh, and, um, and so um, I've, 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 that has been part and parcel of also giving away here in Nairobi. I've also very much in Kenya. I've been very happy to speak to students. Um, in schools and, and to, it's, it's my way of giving back. Getting back to the environment that you grew up on, mm. they say kwamba mazingira yale yanakuwa yanakuwa affect all the way along yeah. and they shape who you are. Yeah. Uh, what is it that you think you brought from that life apart from here ya kusoma mm. uh, in terms of peer pushing back against you know now what we call the 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 the, the authoritarian or the authority figure not necessarily authoritarian but authority figures mm. like leaders whether they're business leaders religious leaders what made you a rebel yeah. did it come from that childhood or did it come from somewhere else i think i was i was one of these weird naughty kids but I, you know my mother will, will tell you that but also, Lazima I Nisemi, mean, I think if one person I can give credit with is my mother. So my, ma my mom was very, I think she was my first teacher, but also she was the person who sort of like could see my talents, if you were to say so. And I remember very well, I, I was, even with all those difficulties, I mean, I had a university lecture at, when I was standard five as my art teacher. That is a privilege. And I was only looking back at, um, at that 
And but it's my mother because he, she, she, she knew her colleague used to have um, um, her colleague used to, her colleague's husband used to teach at uh, uh, University of Dar, Mwalim Mwenesi. So Mwalim Mwenesi alikuwa Mwalim wangu wa kwanza wa art. So I used to borrow uh, art pieces from him. Alafu naenda nyumbani, na chora, na mpelekea, pale, you know, university, pale, kalimu na mlimani. Kwa sabi nimesoma mlimani primary. You know, kwa hiyo, when I look back, is that is, uh, my mom was able to see that. I, and, and uh, you know, so she went to Mwalim Mwenesi, ya kamuambia, my boy, ya na, you know. And so that inspired me. Inspired. And then uh, when I was in, um, when I, I first went to Forodhani secondary, but they didn't have fine art as a, and so my mom was advised, and I think he went and, and, uh, and, and, and asked for a transfer. I went to Azania where they teach fine arts. So, I mean, all these things sort of like inspired. Because really, yeah. at that time, by the way, uh, yeah, really fine art ilikuwa ni kama huyu yeah, so ameshafa no failure, exactly. aende tu akasome <laughs> art. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I look back, I mean, she was always supportive. on the lookout and very supportive. And, 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 but she allowed you also to be a rebel. No, I don't think she allowed. <laughs> I, I think I was always somebody who's be, you know, behind the scenes. So, you know, and and I I so I was a little bit of 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 that, but I think I wasn't. Um, I, I was always that kind of. I think my my editors also would say that because I would somebody who would want to do things on the contrary to you know. I was always asking why, even as a. So I, I think I had a little bit of that. Um, I always had a bit, you know. I think a bit of that, you know, a bit of a, of a, of a rebel in me, and. Um, I I I also I actually I also didn't like losing whether it's an argument whether it's uh, it's uh, I, <laughs> like I was very competitive you know as a, as a, as a, on the pitch I played football very competitively when in my in my younger days and I I didn't like to lose I, that one I know I know very well I mean I didn't like to 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 lose um in fact I remember the first time I cried as is when we lost in the we set again. We didn't lose actually. We drew our games. I I actually we didn't continue to the next. I remember we traveled all the way to Mwanza for the tournament from Da, and I presented Kanda and Mashariki, and it pained me. We we did not proceed. So I think I didn't like to lose. You know whether it's an argument or it's on the pitch, and so I kind of um, um, grew up uh, that way. But I must also add that uh, I think I also started working very young, and that shaped me because you know I you know immediately I developed you know I worked in a very independent organization, a very big organization where I had to work with independent minds and very professionals. When you start that at a very, it shapes you and it it built me, and and so I was able to learn. Uh, from, you know, you don't get to learn that kind of stuff in school. You learn it by actually, you know, doing, doing it. So that, that was also something that, you know, uh, I mean, I got to work with um, people um, like Wahome Mutahi, you know, much, much when I was much younger. My colleague and my friend Mada, you know, the artist, you know, um, and Paul, and Frank, you know, the late Frank Odoi was an artist, and you know, these were very, you know, professionals. You know, when I came into the scene, they were already, you know, there, and so uh, I learned a lot from them. In a very long career, because you said you started working at a young age, mm. what I would say, I'll give you three. No. What are the three cartoons that you recall that sort of shaped or added to your work body? and also mm. maybe said a lot about you or gave you a unique experience? The ones that immediately, with this question, you can recall. Okay, so there are many. Like uh, Labda Kuna one. I think the one that I remember uh, is the one about... Um, so the, the interesting thing, just to, to add it, is that sometimes they, 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 they are the cartoons that I think that are very impactful and I love them and all. They are not the ones that you know people love it, and it is sometimes. Sometimes I do a good idea, but a random one, and sometimes it causes all these issues. And I even wonder. So one is uh, the one I did when you know it's called. I used to call it a, 
um, the one I did when Moy retired. I think I did a drawing of him saying, you know, a picture, a cartoon of Moy saying, you know, the person appearing there is no longer the president of Kenya and is not allowed to transact in a business. And basically, I took the, 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 the idea from the notices that appear in a newspaper when actual companies advertise somebody has messed up something. And uh, it's just the impact. It's just that it was, the, the reaction was so impactful. I mean, there were people who cast me and they said, you are disrespectful and all that. And it was quite um, surreal because I didn't expect that. So it was actually quite, um, quite 2002. It was quite, uh, that, that is memorable because uh, I, I, I remember very well the, the, you know, the, the, the reaction. Um, I think that was, uh, that was it. And then I think the, the other one is that uh, I did a cartoon of um, during Kibaki of Lucy Kibaki, the late Lucy Kibaki sitting on Kibaki and Kibaki signing something. And I actually got that idea from my, my baba actually. My baba actually just, you know, I one day said, um, he said, we were talking and I asked him what, you know, and he said, ah, we are mama mim kalia sana. So I said, okay, I just said, okay, this is interesting. I mean, you know, and actually, literally, I, I did that. So um, that, that was not published. My editors, actually, my editor, I sneaked it behind my editors. But my editorial director, Wangedi, caught up with it. <laughs> it's like two o'clock. I know, sorry. Wangedi, Swahili, which I do most of the time, at eight in the, in, the, in the evening, and he withdrew it. But they forgot to withdraw the, the online version of it. So online it went. Sasa kesho yake vumbi likatokea. Online the nation was accused of censoring itself and all that things and and so and I and my editor remember you know he memoed me and and I I my my editorial director Wangedi Mwangi who you know really you know I I have a lot to thank him because he was wonderful you know editor and boss I mean he he kind of, um, you know, warned me with, with dire consequences if I repeat that. But it was, um, it was, uh, it, it, it was that I remember because, you know, there was also a lot of, you know, that reaction. And, uh, and I also didn't think that, you know, it, it deserved that kind of reaction. That there was, there were lots of, react, you know, people who actually were, you know, um, kind of, there were a lot of people who were happy, but it was also at that time when we had, uh, you know, um, Kibaki, I think it was also the golden time for cartoonists, but also you had a situation where we were trying to deal with Kibaki as a president, because he came with a lot of goodwill, and we, in the beginning, we didn't also not know how to deal with him, because he's this guy who actually was just won against a dictator of many years, but... Kwa hiyo kulikuwa na mchanganyiko kidogo hapo lakini baada ya muda so that cartoon was very very um uh ilileta shida kidogo na ilikuwa na impact so that was a, and then the third one of course it's probably the Jakaya Kikwete one simply because uh, also it's that I was I didn't expect and uh, yeah it, you know it, it 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 for a whole year that was a bit of a of uh, of uh, and which is also it led to many other things because you know I mean the, the authorities in Dar they were very adamant that you know uh, they didn't want to listen to 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 to, to anything I mean they just said, you know we'll teach you a lesson and and they, so the paper was just basically despite numerous ex, you know explanations and and all that and uh, so you know when I look back I I you know. But that tells you also the power of um, speaking truth to power and also the power of um, editorial cartoons. Editorial, and, and it's not me alone. I mean, throughout history, if you look at in, in Europe, in America, in, in, in the, in the, in the, since antiquity, I mean, satire has that power. It upsets emperors and presidents and because you demean them. You know, you, you make them look small. These are human beings. So cartoons basically make them look small. And, 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 and they don't like that, I suppose. Working um, situated in Kenya, do you think that 
that has also helped you because of the freedom compared to let's say if you would be today a cartoonist in Tanzania with that cartoon of Kikwete, sijui gazeti lile lingefungiwa au na wengefungwa. I don't yeah. think hata kungekuwa na editor labda angesema ange entertain you, you know to begin with. So I as I said I must admit yes I mean think uh, kufanya kazi hapa imesaidia simply because nilikuwa nafanya kazi na an independent organization ambayo uh, nationals it was independent and uh, kulikuwa na uh, unaweza kusema modicum of freedom hapa na, 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 na at least kwa kiasi fulani kwa hiyo kili, kwa kiasi kikubwa ilisaidia na kiasi kikubwa iliniwezesha ili, ili mimi ku, 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 kuchora michoro hiyo kwa sababu yes namba moja you see the way the, if you know if this is not even going to be published you will not even think about it i mean you start thinking about it if you are you, you see the the, the the freedom of expression starts with uh, it that exactly thank you very much it starts with freedom to think so if you are you know you start self censorship you start thinking okay this will not but i i, I was lucky enough to start working uh, at an environment where i was allowed to think i was allowed to express myself but it was and not only your boss uh, in this case but also also the law i yes, mean and also the law. they wouldn't come and, and, and exactly. get you they exactly. wouldn't i mean over the years i must admit there have been actually lots of uh, i must say also you know lawsuits against my drawings people again i said this is the importance you know it's very important to understand that also once you work also with a, you know for an established organization is that all these you know um, drawings that i did they were behind the scenes some of them that they were i was you know i was taken to the, the paper was taken to court you know to answer questions but the paper did go to court and and, and that that's important that they defended also that freedom of expression uh, at no point my editors would come and i think we would discuss it and we would figure out and and, and you know the, there are times they would say okay you know hold on you know we have a court case here don't which is fair and, and i think but you know lots of our artists don't have that didn't have that privilege don't have that privilege even today uh it's it's a very it's a privilege and and what i what i've always seen also tell people that uh, it has been a privilege to do what i do and so i also treat it with uh, with that humility but also with that uh, kind of understanding that that yes you know the others don't have this opportunity to do that what what i do my last question is what is your next big project you must have something up your sleeve i mean you went from being uh you know editorial cartoonist <laughs> xyz what comes uh, after that uh, no uh, artists ha always have something up their sleeves all the you know journalists and uh, in, in general and all that but uh no i'm working on a book project now so i'm i'm, I'm working on that um and uh so that's a very exciting project it's a very it's a, it's a very um involving project uh, I've been working and researching on it for some years now. Um, so I'm, I'm just now at the point where uh, they say um, um, the rubber is about to meet the rod. Uh, you know, that is drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing again. But uh, I've, I've done lots of research about it. I've, I've been researching for this uh, number of years now. And... Uh, and so I'm very excited about it. And I, I must admit, I want to take, a, I, sh I will take a bit of break from my usual editorial work and concentrate on that before I get back. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to.